Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about Merger FS. And if we switch over to my screen here, we can see that I'm in a directory that I called Mount Point Merger FS. And if we look at what's in this directory, we have a bunch of files. And if I look at all my mount points, we can see that hard drive zero has file three and four, hard drive one has file and file one, and hard drive two has file two. If I touch another file here, file five, uh, or file five, um, and we look here, we see that we have all those, and if we do the same looking at the different mount points, we now can see that the five <laughs> ended up on uh, hard drive two, and file five ended up on hard drive zero. So this is a way of writing to multiple drives at the same time, and reading from multiple files at the same time. And of course we can remove this five file that was strange, and now it is removed from the different files and so on. So the setup of this is pretty easy. You need to install MergerFS as a package in Debian or any other uh, um, distribution that you have. And then you can go into your FS tab and edit and add an extra row here. So first off, we have the definitions of the different drives up here. And then we have the drives mount points in a list like this. And then you say merger FS as my mount point. I want to use the merger FS extension. And then I can turn cache files off. I can have the category create, create of preferred random. And this means that it will look at the amount of storage used on the different drives. And then if one drive have two gigabytes stored and the other one drive have one gigabyte stored, the one with the one gigabyte stored would have more preferred uh, preferment to actually be there. It's double like double as likely that you will put a file on the drive that has more storage left. So that's how it's looking at it. There is totally random as well, and there is a couple of different other modes that you could put in. Uh, we have this function uh, create uh, get attributed to newest. It's the default in this case. The, there is a lot of different options and none of them are really the per perfect option. It all depends on your use case. And then we have drop cache on close. This means if you have the cache enabled, when it actually uh, fi files are closed and you don't use the file anymore, it's dropped from the cache. So this could be good if you are writing a bunch of different files and you just write it drop, write, drop, and so on, and you don't read them afterwards, then uh, dropping off the close could be really good. Another thing you can do is have this configuration file, and it's a normal ini file, where you can just put the options in there. So if I cat that file, it's not what I'm using at the moment, but there I just put them in a list like this, one line uh, for each of them, and then the different options that you want to set. So this is pretty much all that is going into setting up Merger FS, and I wanted to see how it actually performed uh, if I looked at it compared to a single drive or to a multi-drive Ceph solution. And these uh, numbers are not something that you will use as real values on how fast Ceph is or how fast anything is, because it's one machine with three drives, and then I just look at the particular thing in this machine. The Ceph is set up with one copy on one machine and so on. So it's not really something that you can compare to. It's not really a real Ceph system, but I still wanted to see what kind of overhead I had with the different solutions. So if we switch over to my list here, we can see that a single disk um, if I just do large read from it, it has 132 megabytes per second. If I do large writes, it has 126 megabytes per second. I'm not sure if that is good or bad. These are quite old uh, drives, but uh, yeah, it's a number at least. And then we have for small random read and writes, very small values here as well. If we look at the Ceph system, we see that the read, of course, when we read from multiple drives at the same time, 
we get a huge benefit from the Ceph system in performance, almost 700%. And when we do right, well, because we have a little bit of an overhead, because the sizes of these files do not um, overlap with the sizes of the objects in Ceph, we get a little bit of a penalty here, so 75%. But when it comes to random read and write, because 4K is the smallest object size in Ceph, we e actually get a little bit of a boost when it comes to reading and writing. So that's interesting. When it comes to Merger FS, I wanted to see both for read and write what actual numbers I got. And we can see the read numbers here. It's a little bit of a penalty on the reads, both for large files and for small files, it's not that huge. But the main thing here is the writes, because when we do random writes or sequential writes, it uses function in the operating system that is not implemented in merger FS yet, so it just crashes out and errors, and I don't get any numbers at all. So when it comes to merger FS, it may not be the best solution for a lot of different applications. For instance, if you are using tor torrents that might use some functionality in the operating system to write to disks that are not implemented yet, then it might fail. If you are using it just as a media drive where you store a bunch of media that you then want to read from different ser um, services, then this might be the perfect solution for you because if you're losing one drive, then you are just using the, losing the media that was on that drive. The rest of the merger FS solution is still functioning and delivering all those files. And when it comes to overhead, you of course have a little of overhead depending on where the different files are stored. Uh, so it might have some metadata there, but other than that, you don't really have that much of an overhead on storage for your solution. So this is a kind of Stripe solution where you get the benefit of having a lot of hard drive um, space where you can store a bunch of different things. The drawback is of course that you don't have any extra copies and you need to keep a separate backup if you need to have backup on these files, but it at least gives you a huge amount of storage. When it comes to Ceph, if you want to run that in a preferred setup, you should have three copies of all your data in order to keep it safe and of course an extra backup on that if you have really sensitive data. So that will g not give you as much storage space, but as we see here, reading from a Ceph storage could be a benefit when it comes to reading uh, data really fast and having large throughput on the reading at least. So this was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave those in the comment section down below. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.